day in and day out, week after week, month after month, year after year. We should reflect a little more of Christ. We should be a little more mature in the things of the Lord. Are you tracking with me this morning? Does that make sense? I'm talking about spiritual growth and maturity. So, Pastor T, how do I make application of the Word? How do I apply it? You tell me I need to, how do I do it? night and the pastor here at New Life Community Church, and I thank you so much for turning us on, tuning us in. I trust, as always, that the Lord's going to bless you all over the place as we fellowship together here for the next several moments. We're going to jump into a brand new teaching tonight. Uh, Tet's passage is taken from Proverbs. I love the book of Proverbs, and we're going to be dealing with the topic of the application. The application. How much of God's Word do you apply to? To your life. You know, it's one thing to read it. It's one thing to study it. It's a one thing to memorize it. It's a whole other issue when we talk about making application of or putting into effect in our life that which we know. Uh, essentially, it's like taking what we have in our head and getting it in our hearts and allowing that to come through our mouth and uh, into our everyday walking around life. Well, we hope to encourage you with this particular teaching to do just exactly that. Let me read this one verse in your hearing. It's our text passage, and we're going to jump right on into it again. Proverbs chapter 23. I don't think I told you that. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse number 12. Here's what the Word says. Apply your heart to instruction. Your heart and your ears to words of knowledge. What a great passage. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each one listening in right now, and I pray that by your word you would speak to the hearts of each one. Help us, Lord, not only to, to learn to know your word, but to make application of it in our life by the power of your spirit. We pray and ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, you hang on. I'm going to be back here in just a very short period of time to wrap things up. God bless. And apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. I'm going to head to your study notes right off the get-go this morning. You fill this in with me if you would, please. Someone has determined... The following. Now, I'm not exactly sure who come up with this. I've been hearing this for years and years and years and years. But it goes like this. After 24 hours, tomorrow at this time, you may accurately remember only about 5% of what you hear. Boy, do you know how that makes the preacher feel? You do all this studying, all this prep work. You stand up here and just preach your little heart out. And tomorrow, by 1 o'clock, you're going to remember 5% of it. Wow. It goes on to say you remember about 15% of what you read, 35% of what you study. Everybody say study. Is that your favorite word? 57% of what you see and hear. Watch this. I don't mean for this to be funny, but it sounds funny to me. You can remember 100% of that which you memorize. Every time I hear that, I only go, duh. But I won't, do, I won't duh you this morning. Watch this. Unfortunately, way too many folks make it to, or actually never make it to the memorization club of the Bible, the memorization club of the church. Instead, they settle for being card-carrying members of the 5% club, 5%. Consequently, they end up failing to make application of the word they hear. 
Now, I'm going to be teaching you this morning something that the Lord impressed on my heart during small group time Wednesday night, just as clear as a bell. And that would be uh, the subject of making application. Simply taking what you hear, that which falls on your ears, and not forgetting it, not letting it go, but rather applying it to your life. Watch this, and applying it by your life. If you don't do it, then who is? It's up to you. Say, it's up to me. One of my favorite stories, I may have told this before, but at my age, sometimes I forget whether I told it or not. So if I did, you just laugh and act like you haven't heard it before. There's two fellows named John and Rick. Oh, John and Rick. They were called the human resources department of their uh, employment, their employer, and the HR rep just blurted out right off the get-go, John! It has been reported that you called Rick stupid. And John just immediately defended himself. And he said, I did not. I did not call Rick stupid. I asked him if he was stupid. <laughs> That's funny right there. I don't care who you are. No doubt, listen to this. We have to be careful how we apply the things that are said to us. We have to be careful about the things that are said about us. And we as believers have to be very careful, especially about things that are said over us. Over us. One writer has submitted this, and I quote, Applying the Bible, applying the Bible is the duty of all Christians. So when I'm preaching on this, if you claim to be a believer, then I'm talking to you this morning. The word apply is pretty easy to define, but it's not so easy to put into practice. No pun intended. Actually, I did intend a pun. I think two of you got it. Listen to our text passage again, Proverbs 23. Apply your heart to instruction. Apply what? How many of you have a heart? Can I see your hand? Some of you I wonder about. Granny Clampett used to say, Mr. Drysdale or Miss Drysdale had a thumping gizzard. I think I know some folks like that. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to, to the words of knowledge. Number two on your study notes, the Hebrew word for apply is very simply transliterated as be Oh, that's the way it's spelled, bow, and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly. But here's what it means. It means to come in or come. It means to go in or go, to come and go. Later on in chapter 23 of Proverbs, verse 19 helps us with this. I'm going to the amplified version here. Listen to this. Listen, my son, and be wise. Look and direct your heart. You Direct your heart in the way, and the Amplified adds, in the way of the Lord. The Aramaic Bible in plain English, which is kind of difficult to say, but it's a certain uh, uh, translation. It puts it this way. Set up my doctrine in your heart. I like that. Set up my doctrine, my teaching, God speaking. Set that up in your heart. That's what we're talking about when we're speaking about making application or applying the word. The contemporary English version, if you're looking at that, it says it this way, be wise and have enough sense to follow the right path. If I come in to something, that means very simply that I place myself into that thing. Are you with me? Are y'all here this morning? I would just need to say amen, send you on somewhere. I just got this dead sense in my heart this morning. Y'all are not with it yet. Do we need to sing some more or what? Help me out. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Widow ones to him be wrong. They are weak, but he is strong. Sing it, church. 
Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. How do we know that? The Bible tells me so. You ready to go? Listen, applying means I purposefully engage something. In the spiritual sense, it's not just that I go into or come into something, but also that I allow something to come into me or to go into me. Paul said it like this when he wrote the letter to the Philippians, chapter three and ver- or chapter four and verse nine. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, look at this, put it into practice. You understand what he's saying? Whatever you hear from me, whatever you watched me doing in terms of spiritual things, you put it into practice. And look at this, the God of peace will be with you. Similar to the Hebrew bow, the Greek here is proso. And it means, just very simply, to practice something, specifically a routine or a habit. Beloved, an action that is routinely practiced will become what? It will become a habit. A good habit. How many of you know there are some bad habits? And there are also some good habits. Hopefully the good will overshadow the bad and eliminate it in time. Applying means that we allow for a particular teaching, whatever that teaching is, we allow for that teaching to be put into our heart. And because it's in your heart, the real you, you will likely act on it. Now here's a question for you. How do I ensure that the peace of God will be with me? Paul said there in Philippians, do a certain thing, the God of peace will be with you. How can I ensure that? Number three on your study notes, by putting into practice, by applying what God has taught, that's how we can be assured of having God's peace with us. Do you sense God's peace in your life? Do you know the one thing that really sold it for me? Before being born again, I would lay in the bed at night as a 13, 14, 15 year old teenager, just tormented by the fact that I knew that I wasn't right with God and I was facing an eternity separated from God in hell. There was nothing peaceful about that. I was a nervous wreck about that. But after having invited Christ into my heart, I sensed this deep, settled peace that I experience even to this day. I love that. How do you get that? The world knows nothing about that. In fact, the world might talk to you about a peace of God, P-I-E-C-E, and they really don't even know what they're talking about. God offers His peace, a peace which passes all understanding that will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, I don't, I'm not sure what you've been taught. I know what the, those of you here at New Life have been taught. Those of you listening by way of live stream, not sure what you've been taught. But I want to encourage you to hear from the Word of God. Hear what the apostles have to say, what the prophets have to say, what the evangelists have to say, what the pastor teacher has to say, and apply that to your own life. Are you aware of this? We have to purpose for God's teaching to come in. Let me do that again. We have to purpose for that teaching to come in. It's not enough to merely allow it to hit our ears. Revelation 3 helps me to say what I want to say to you. Revelation 3 and 20, look at this. Jesus is speaking, and he says this. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, look at this, and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Fellowship with him or her. Will you note what that verse does not say? It does not say, hey, y'all, I'm getting ready to come bust your door down and move up in your heart, and there's nothing that you can do about it. 
It doesn't say that. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice and opens the door, he's not going to bust the door down. He's a gentleman. He just rings the doorbell, dingy, dingy, dingy. It's up to us to open the door, an act of the will. Now, application assumes something. Application assumes that we have learned something purposed to change our lives. Let me do that again. Application, if we're applying something or allowing something to be applied, in particular a teaching, it assumes that we have or we are learning something that is purpose, that we have purpose for that thing to change our lives. How many of you need your life changed? I do. I've been born again, and I am pursuing a lifestyle of holiness, but I ain't there yet. There's still some things that can be changed. The most spiritual person looking back at me right now, there's some things about your life that could be and, and probably no doubt need to be changed. And by applying these scriptures, that can be accomplished. Listen to this online article or a quote from an online article that I was perused this week. Quote, learning for life change begs for a method or system towards building understanding. Sad to say, far too many believers are stuck in that 5% rut. The 5% rut. And that system, if it is any system at all, is serving to fail them in terms of their growth and their maturity toward God and godly things. Are you aware of this? If you've been paying attention, you should be at New Life. Every step you take in your salvation experience should reflect a little more of Christ in your life. Day in and day out, week after week, month after month, year after year. We should reflect a little more of Christ. We should be a little more mature in the things of the Lord. Are you tracking with me this morning? Does that make sense? I'm talking about spiritual growth and maturity. So, Pastor T, how do I make application of the Word? How do I apply it? You tell me I need to, how do I do it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Number four on your study note, which is actually step number one, or I could say it another way, step number one is number four on your study notes. Here we go. Fill this in with me. How do I make application of the Word? There's no substitute for reading the Word. You read the Word. You knew that was coming sometime today, didn't you? Read the Word. Listen to me. A simple, systematic reading of the Word of God will set you apart from the masses of spiritual simpletons alive and well on planet Earth. Does it blow you away on occasion when you every now and then get to hear someone having a spiritual conversation, perhaps something about the Bible, and what they say is just totally out in left field? You're like, man, I've never read that in the Bible, or that's not what that says. Well, a systematic reading and a systematic uh, a perusal of the Word will set you apart from that crowd, if you please. Somebody has given us this, and I, I detest statistics in some respects. This is pretty reliable. This has been bore out to me by more than one source. But just over 34% of adults, U.S. adults, read the Bible once per week. Or more. 34% of U.S. adults read the Bible once per week or more. The stat goes this way 50% read it less than twice per year. Twice per year. That includes those who never read. Yet. Hey, let me ask you again this morning, probably the question of the week, nearly every week we get together. Where are you in that survey? Are you one of the 34%? Have you developed a systematic 
study, systematic reading of the Word of God? Or would you be one of those that claim to believe the Word, but you never read the Word? Where are you in that survey? I'm not here to beat you up. Say amen right there. I'm not. I'm not here to beat you up. I'm not here to beat you down. But I'm here to witness to you, especially this morning, that reading the Word of God will transform you from the inside out. Not, as I reminded my football players Friday morning, it's not religion that seeks to transform you from the outside in by changing clothes, changing style, cutting your hair differently and blah, blah, blah. But it will transform you from the inside out. Beloved, once the inside's changed, we're going to know it on the outside. That's right. But you can change the outside all day long. That in and of itself is not going to modify or transform the inside. The Word of God will transform you on the inside. Therefore, I highly recommend it to you. The enemy. Who is the enemy, church? Did somebody say the Baptist? No. No. The enemy, Satan, will devote a lot of time. Trust me when I tell you he has time. All the time in the world. He will devote a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of focus toward putting up roadblocks to your word time. Benny, have you experienced any roadblocks this week? Listen to this preacher. You will have to fight him on this. No ifs, ands, and some people just acquiesce to him. And they're like, well, I'm not fighting the devil. Well, he won that one, didn't he? You will have to fight him on this. Another favorite story of mine, I don't know who these two guys were, but two men were once observed standing on opposite sides of a doorway. One of them was on the inside, the other guy was on the outside, and there was this huge, big old hawking piece of furniture stuck right in the doorway. And they were both pulling and pushing and twisting and turning. Finally, after this long struggle, I mean just really uh, laboring, the guy on the outside blurted out, Man, we ain't never going to get this thing in that house. And the guy on the inside said, Inside? I thought we were trying to get it outside. <laughs> Sounds like some church committees, doesn't it? <laughs> Actually, it sounds like Satan fighting your word time. Sounds like the devil fighting your word time. Can I encourage you to let him know that the word is coming in to you? Satan, the word is coming into this believer. I love it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to make time for it. I'm going to set aside sometimes some system. That word is coming in, and Satan, you are not going to stop it. Can you be encouraged to talk like that to him? Man, what if he gets mad at me? He's already mad at you because you're serving God, and he wants you to serve him. Listen to Jeremiah 31 and verse 21. I love this. It comes from the contemporary English version. It says, With rock piles and signposts, mark the road well. In other words, make every effort to eliminate the roadblocks and establish the means that direct you to have some quality, quality word time. What kind of word time? quality. Read the Word. We're talking about how to make application of the Word in our life. Number five on your study notes, and it's step number two, study the Word. Study the Word. Read the Word. Study the Word. For me as a pastor and a Jesus chaser, one of the most disappointing things that seems to be missing from a lot of Christians' conversations. Not all of them, but a lot of them. One with the other is something that would sound like this. Hey, brother or sister, sister or brother, 
I was studying my Bible this week. Love it. We're going to cut in right there. There is a back half to this. We'll look forward to sharing that with you next week. But let me wrap it up for this particular session by asking you this. Do you study the Word of God? Not just read it. And I'm surprised at how many people, even a church attendees, that do not read the Word of God. But let's go a step further. Do you study it? And can you be encouraged to get involved in a Bible study? I was just very impressed this week and, and quite blessed when I ran into, actually met another pastor, pastors here locally. I'd never met him before. Uh, he belongs to a different movement than I do, but that's quite okay. And he invited me to a Bible study. He said, hey, some of us have a Bible study. He named the place, named the time. And I was really impressed with the fact that it was in a local restaurant, not just holed up in some house somewhere or even in some church facility. I said that to say this, do you study the Word of God? And can you be encouraged, if you do not, to get involved in a Bible study? And in particular, to get involved in a Bible study, whether it's a small group setting or a group of men or a group of ladies, as the case might be, or a group of teenagers, but to, to get involved in a study with other people, not just in a vacuum. We need our personal time. Indeed, we do. That's when God really speaks to our heart. And I have that. I call that my mirror time each morning. And there's a lot that flows from that. But there, there's nothing sweeter, nothing better than getting together with some other people that may even think a little differently than you do. More than likely, they do. And study the Word of God to pour yourself into the Word and allow the Word to pour into you and to allow those other brothers or sisters, your peers, to pour into you as well as in terms of what they perceive or receive from the Word. Be encouraged. Study the Word of God. Father, I thank you for each one listening into this telecast, and I pray in Jesus' name that by your Word we have been challenged, and I pray that by the Spirit... Men and women and boys and girls would be drawn to your word and drawn to one another to study this word, to show themselves approved and to know it and to live it out and make application of it each day. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, beloved, again, I thank you so much for being here. We really do appreciate our television audience. We've been with you uh, in total for about 17 years now. So thankful for the partnership we have at BTW21. Uh, we've been with nearly seven years at this point, and uh, just encourage you to continue to pray for us. Pray that the Lord would use these teaching times to speak to hearts through His Word. I'm Terry Knight, and pastor of New Life Community Church. I trust you're going to have a great day, what's left of it. Great week, and Lord willing, we'll see you next time. Remember, my friends, Jesus is coming back. Is He coming back for you?